Okay, so this is going to be our second set of notes uh, for the cell energy unit. Uh, this is going to be on photosynthesis, or the, the reactions that occur during photosynthesis. In our first uh, <coughs> notes on photosynthesis, we learned the basic process uh, consists of uh, autotrophic organisms which produce their own food, uh, taking sunlight, using it in the energy from that sunlight uh, to complete several chemical reactions and then to produce sugars and oxygen uh, through that process. Uh, this process, if you remember from the first notes, consists of two reactions. The first of those are called the light reactions or the light dependent reactions. And uh, since they're light dependent, they have to have light. If there's no light, they can occur. Now some people kind of recognize this, that photosynthesis is all about sunlight, but uh, one thing they don't realize or uh, don't really think about is there are reactions that take place during photosynthesis that don't require sunlight. These reactions, however, the light reactions do. So they use sunlight, and uh, the main way they get this going is through a, a pigment uh, called, pigments called chlorophyll A and B. These are the green pigments. To give the plant or the plants the color green, and uh, whatever pigment uh, is dominant in that plant, that will be the color of that plant for the most part. And they have something called photosystems, and in the membrane of the chloroplast, uh, in the thycoid membranes, they have these photosystems uh, kind of uh, implanted there. And I'll try to give you a piece of the picture here. And uh, kind of looks like this. If you remember, we have the lipid bilayer. Here. This makes up most membranes. And then within those lipid bilayers, we have these photosystems. Photosystem here. This would be one or two. Diffusion is just a movement, uh, movement of particles from high to low. Okay, so where there's like a bit of membrane and we have this many particles on one side and the other this many on the other side, this one has a whole bunch more. So if this membrane happens to open, we're going to kind of move and try to go back and forth and equalize out. Well, the chloroplast makes use of that idea and completes photosynthesis using diffusion. Within the cycloid membrane, though, is something called an electron transduction, ETC. And this, this, what this does, it causes this high amount of particles to be on one side and very low amount of particles on the other. And this big difference between one side and the other causes a really rapid change or rapid movement of particles and uh, produces the energy that's needed uh, to produce glucose later on. And uh, you see here, the main product that they're really trying to produce is H+. And uh, it breaks apart water to do that because it just takes H2O breaks these off, produces the H plus, 
then it has for every H2O, it has one of these, so for every two H2O, it makes up oxygen and oxygen, and this produces O2. And this occurs in the light reactions. And then later on, uh, after this electron transport chain has produced a large amount of ATP, ATP is then used to make, and other products are then used to make uh, glucose. But uh, this process, the light reactions, they occur in the membrane of the chloroplast, the phycoloid and grana stacks. And they move electrons to make compounds through the idea of diffusion. And then it requires H2O. H2O, sunlight, ADP, and NADP. So not only is it breaking down the H2O into O2 and getting these hydrogen uh, ions, but it's also uh, using sunlight, but also ADP and NADP to make this process complete. Uh, at the end, though, it produces, we're going to the next page here, produces NADPH, oxygen, and ATP. So at the end of uh, light reactions, we have a lot of this, which is then going to be used in the, in the uh, dark reactions. Oxygen, which can be a byproduct, and then ATP, which will also be used in the dark for light independent reactions. Okay. It, uses, it produces ATP through a protein chain. I can remember when we at cell membranes, uh, it's the protein that's is present in the cell membrane between the in the, in the lipid bilayer, and then it gets this high energy difference of hydrogen or hydrogen ions on one side, very little on the other, and as they move, it then produces this ATP from ADP. And then, so then the next part we have is dark reactions, not dark reactions, and uh, the end result of this is to produce glucose okay, or sugar. It's also known as the Calvin cycle. Generally, kind of discovered it. It's really important to remember that light is not required. It doesn't need it. So, although the light reactions are require require sunlight, it is the products that are then produced in the light reactions can then be used in the dark reactions, whether the dark reactions are the sunlight or not. Okay. And again, it's important to remember the products made from the light reaction reactions are then used in the dark reactions, and then the dark reactions produce uh, sugar, but they also produce other products which are then put back into uh, the light reactions, such as ADP and NADP plus. And that's basic, that's your basic reactions for photosynthesis. I hope that makes a little bit more sense for you to you. Make sure you watch the animations that I've included, some of the videos. This can be something that can be hard to understand. The main, the main part you need to understand is what is produced in each one, and what is used, and uh, what are the end results. The light reactions, they're producing ATP, really the main thing is ATP, and the byproduct is oxygen, which we then consume again, but ATP, which is then used in the Calvin cycle to produce glucose. So just keep that in mind, and again, again let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you're modules going well.